YouTube. Today we are going to be answering a lot of questions that you guys have. Why do I have a bounty? Why is this strange man punching me? Why is my matriarch put away? All of those questions and more will be answered because today's video we will be covering pickpocketing. The benefits, where you should do it at, what it's used for, what are the benefits, what rare items can you get from it, and what is the best way to do it. So let us jump right on into it and first talk to the man that is currently punching the shit out of me. But before we jump into that video, let us currently just let me remind you that how thankful I am that you guys are here today watching this video. This is actually recommended to why one of you guys. You guys said, hey, what is the best place for me to go pickpocketing? And I said, do you go to Evermore Castle? And they said, okay, I'll look up where that is. And I said, no need. We'll make a video on it today together. And then we'll talk about some other things on it too, such as the rewards from pickpocketing, the drawbacks. Is it a good money maker? And so much more. So uh, before further ado, just a short, quick reminder to leave a comment on the video. The question of the day for this video, which I actually haven't thought of before I started recording. Uh, ooh, all right, here we go. What is your favorite race? For me, it's probably going to be the Bretons, just because I've always liked classes and like races that I looked similar to. Like I like being able to create like my actual face. Um, I know some people, you know, they, they take the opposite approach where they try to make their fantasy characters look the furthest away from them as possible. But that's the question of the day. What is your favorite ESO race? Hey, if you want to even include the crazy ones like the Sea Elves or the Serpent People, whose names I can't remember, hey, go for it, man. I'll, do it. I'll love here. You know, whoever's your favorite, that's your favorite, man. And again, your comment will enter you into the giveaway that I'm doing for the month of April. But let us jump right on into it. So we are talking today about pickpocketing. While this man sits here and punches me endlessly, we are going to look at the perks that make pickpocketing more efficient. And we're going to go from the top one that helps you, and that is in the medium armor, Windwalker, I'm sorry, Improved Sneak. So you can see that this reduces the size of detection while sneaking by 5% for each piece of medium armor equipped. My character is not fully built for this. Pickpocketing is not something that you necessarily need the most OP build for, but if you were building for it, you would want to have Improved Sneak too with medium armor maxed on your characters. Then we are going to go down to Ledgermind. We are going to look at improved sneaking. Being able to be able to walk around and sneak at a cheaper rate is going to be very helpful, especially if you're a magic character. Improved chances of successful pickpocketing. This is definitely the biggest one. Trafficker. This just helps you sell your goods. Locksmith. Probably the best actual passive perk in the game, in my opinion, because I love being able to just pop lock anything. But... That is going to then take us down to the Dark Brotherhood. I actually also like this perk because you will accidentally murder people a lot. You will also use the Blade of Woe quite often, so this is a good perk. This one's not relevant, but this is also good if you're farming for the Gaze of Sithis. Shadow Rider can also be really nice too because this actually prevents guards from locking onto you when you're riding your horse from you. Please ignore the blood that is coming out of my chest here. I know it's very distracting. Uh, Spectral Guardian can also be, or Spectral Assassin, excuse me, can also be helpful because that's 15% chance to shroud yourself. Because again, you will be using the Blade of Woe uh, during this method. Uh, and then we are going to go down to the Thieves Guild. Swiftly Forgotten is nice because, as you can see, I'm getting my ass beat right now. It's always nice to have that bounty go away faster. Getting more stolen goods for your thing. Clemency can be nice because it keeps you, if you get caught by the guards, you don't have to run away from them. You can basically say, hey, look, I'm a cool guy. And they'll be like, all right, yeah, you cool. Uh, timely escape this one is extremely helpful because this actually spawns in some buildings which means that if you've trapped yourself in a bank and you tried to pickpocket somebody in a bank and there's a guard in there and they keep whapping you every time you try to get to the door and fun fact every single time a guard does damage to you their damage increases which is why so many people will say like hey if anyone could box this guard for a minute you know straight and block all their attacks i'll give you such and such gold but it is very difficult to do. For that reason, they will get stronger and stronger. Veil of the Shadows, this decreases the detection range. And then that's going to kind of wrap up all the perks that you need. Now let's start talking about what's going on here and why we are in Evermore. I did not want to hit him. That's very awkward. Um, we are going to take that off of his body. 
So we are in Evermore Castle in Bankarai, which is over in a non-DLC zone, which is why I've selected it. And I've also selected it for a couple other reasons. You will notice that this is a castle based on its name, Evermore Castle. Why is a castle good, you might be wondering? Well, castles have things called nobles, and nobles have the better loot drops from people. So if I was to go behind this individual right here, boom, noble, the higher chance for loot. I believe this individual might be a commoner, so he's a commoner. So there's different types of individuals, commoners, you've got uh, beggars, you've got nobles, you've got fishermen. We are specifically here to focus on the nobles. Why? Because nobles give the better loot. Not that loot is necessarily important, but you couple that with the fact that the guards in here are soldiers, which means that they will actually not really be able to stop you. They can't do anything against you, and you can actually uh, pickpocket everyone twice, oh, which would be great if I had, and I was on the correct bar, that would be great. If I was on the, the castle, we are able to look around and pickpocket all of the nobles in here. You basically have two ways you can do this. You can either do this by pickpocketing them and basically saying, fuck you, I don't care if you catch me. I, you know, I ain't a bitch. Do what you're going to do. Uh, which is actually how I leveled up all my ledgerman skill. I basically said, I don't care if you catch me. I'm going to pickpocket you. The most effective way to do it is to pickpocket them twice. Again, you're going to want to stand behind them and wait until the area goes green. Right now it's currently red. Even if it's a 70% chance, you saw me lose that before. And now you've watched me lose a 90% chance. You'll notice, too, that the pickpocketing chances feel very similar to XCOM's level of pickpocketing chances. Which is unfortunate, but it's something that we have to live with. The ideal ratio is to pickpocket somebody twice. Let's see if we can get this guard over here. We're going to pickpocket him once, wait a minute for the cooldown to go away, and ideally pickpocket them again. This is a 70% chance, however, we've now lost a bunch of those, and we're going to hit him with a 90% chance, and then we are going to hit him with the Blade of Woe. Why did we just Blade of Woe this man? Did we not just take every single item he owns? We did not. He has one additional item for us, a bar of soap, and we're going to take that bar of soap off of his dead body. Poor man, but... Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Why we're stealing these items is we can then resell these items to level up our Ledgerman skill, which is going to be very, very helpful for us because Ledgerman is probably one of the most tedious things to level up in ESO. So, while I'm doing this, let's talk about some things that have been found. So, similar to opening containers in the overworld, there are actual NPCs that have chances to drop furnishing plans and recipes and things. Now, there's a whole bunch of these things, and there actually is a running page on a form that is being constantly added to uh, where things can be gone and looked at. So what that means is, is that people are constantly discovering different people who can give you different things. And why that's cool is, is that can then kind of say, hey, if you guys go over here, you can then you know look at this thing or you can get this item. Why I like that is, is... It, it's it's new. It's actually something that is being constantly worked on and developed. It actually shows that there's reasons to pickpocket specific NPCs as opposed to just going and randomly, you know, pickpocketing all sorts of random people, which, I mean, you know, feels nice, but I want to, you know, know like, if I, hey, if I go pickpocket this person over here, for example, I just pulled up the list. If you pickpocket artisans, you have a chance to get the rough axe. If you pickpocket beggars, you have a chance to get the rough uh, bread recipe if you do cultists and priests you have a chance to get human skulls if you uh, do laborers you have a chance to get furniture designs if you pickpocket mages you can get lesser and common soul gems if you pickpocket outlaws you can get gaming die there's just tons and tons and tons of things that you can get and i am going to copy and paste these and add these into the comments below that way when i have my pinned comment up there if something gets additionally added or if you guys find something, I can add it too. And then you guys can come back and look at this resource and go, wow, this is a constantly updating pickpocketing resource uh, for people, which is what I want it to be. So that's what, uh, what's what we'll do. Uh, you'll see here still that I suck at pickpocketing. I don't know how I constantly lose 90% chances. I think that the game has coded the chances wrong, but I don't, 
I like Zenimax a lot, so I want to give them the benefit of the doubt so that they don't hate me. And this person is just going to definitely remain suspicious. And this is why it's nice to kill them. Uh, even though I've enraged this dude, it actually will then respawn everyone in here, which can be very nice for obvious reasons. Again, too, you'll notice that my companion is away, as Miri does not like when you use the Blade of Woe. So basically, you're going to utilize this area. Some are easier to pickpocket than others. This guy is generally easy here because people can't see him. And you're able to easily get behind him. We actually got an alien white gold compass, which is actually pretty good. And we're going to get him again. This is a 75% chance. And we were able to get it twice in a row with the Blade of Woe without being discovered. So our heat won't go up uh, crazily. So that is what a, I would say is a successful pickpocket. So that's going to wrap up today's video. Again, in the comments below, I will put all of the different areas that you can go, the different types of people you can pickpocket for different rewards. Furnishing plants drop from some, different furniture drops from others, different uh, like treasures drop from other people. That will be linked in the comments below because it would be way too much to go over and a lot of it is very mundane stuff like soul gems from mages and tons and tons and tons of other examples of stuff like that. So to save you time in your day, it'll probably be faster for you to read through that stuff just so you can pick out what you guys find is interesting. But that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Thanks for suggesting this as a comment in the video so that I know that you guys are interested in pickpocketing and how to do it efficiently and the different kind of aspects around it as far as like loot, where to go, rewards, etc. Hopefully I covered and answered all your questions today. So... And if not, just leave me a comment below and I will do what I can to fully answer your questions either next time or an additional video. But that's going to wrap up today's video and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.